Hi friends, in this video we'll install an open source Puppet server version 7 with three clients on Google Cloud, configure them to talk to each other and use this as a virtual lab to work with Puppet in future videos. In a previous video I showed how to install a Rocky Linux VM in Google Cloud but I'll quickly go through the steps. Keep in mind that Google has a program in which you'll get $300 credit when starting with Google Cloud. We're going to need four virtual machines in Google Cloud. The Puppet server will run on a Rocky Linux 8.5, which is the same as Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8.5. Then we'll install three clients, one running Rocky Linux 8.5, one running Ubuntu 22 LTS, which is released recently, and the last running Windows Server 2022 data center with desktop experience. In GCP, under Compute Engine, select VM Instances and then Create Instance. Give it a recognizable name, choose a region that's close to your geographical location, and preferably one that has a low CO2 emission. I'm in the Netherlands, but because the Belgium region is close by and has a low CO2 emission, I'll choose that one. You can leave the zone as default. Because we're setting this up as a virtual lab and not a production environment, we can use the minimum amount of requirements. For the Puppet server, I'll choose two CPUs and two gigabytes of RAM. For the Linux clients, we can lower the memory to one gigabyte of RAM but the Windows Server will need a minimum of 4 GB of RAM. Under Boot Disk, choose the correct OS for each VM. We'll have two VMs running Rocky Linux 8.5, one VM running Ubuntu 22 LTS, and one with Windows Server 2022 Data Center. You can leave the other settings as default. By default, the VMs get an internal ephemeral IP address assigned, which is almost the same as an static uh, IP address. The VM will keep the same IP address when rebooted, unless you delete the VM and recreate it. Further, the VMs will be added in the same subnet, which makes communication possible. In order to remote access the VMs, we need to set up Secure Shell for the Linux VMs and Remote Desktop for the Windows VM. The Secure Shell keys are normally saved on your local machine under the .ssh directory in your user profile. Copy the public key to your clipboard and then in Google Cloud open Metadata in the main menu, select SSH keys, then Edit and add your public SSH key in here to access all your Linux VMs remotely. If you don't have a key or you want to create a new one, then use this command. Provide a passphrase when asked and make sure to save the passphrase in your password manager. Make sure to copy your public key and not your private key. Do not share your private key with anyone or any services. After that, you can SSH into the Linux VMs from your local machine using the external IP address of your Linux VMs. For the Windows Server, you'll need Remote Desktop, which is installed by default in Windows. First, we need to create an account for the RDP connection. Next to the Windows Server VM, press the arrow next to the RDP icon, then choose Set Windows Password. In there, provide a username after that, a random generated password will be shown. Copy and save it in your password manager. Open the start menu and type RDP, then open remote desktop connection. In the computer field, enter the external IP address of your Windows Server VM, then provide the username and password which you just saved. These VMs are at this 
moment directly connected to the internet, which is not advised for a production environment. But by default, the firewall rules in GCP block almost all inbound traffic, except for ICMP, which is for ping, RDP for Windows Remote Desktop Connection, and SSH for Secure Remote Shell on Linux. On the internal subnet between the VMs, all ports are open, so the VMs can communicate on all ports with each other. No rules are set for outbound traffic. Best practice would be to set minimum required access, but because I'm the only one using these VMs and the only outbound connection is to download packages from repositories, this works fine for now. I'll cover setting up the GCP firewall in a future video. We'll be using the open source version of Puppet. You can also use Puppet Enterprise for free with up to 10 nodes. But keep in mind that Puppet Enterprise needs higher requirements from your VM, like at least 8 GB of RAM. Next, we install the Puppet server. SSH into the Rocky Linux with 2 GB of RAM, which we called Puppet, and then log in as root with sudo su dash. You can find all used links and commands in this video down in the description. Enable the Puppet repository by entering this command. And then install Puppet server using DNF package manager. If you're interested in DNF as package manager, watch my video where I covered this. Then we need to reduce the memory allocation from 2 gigabytes to 512 megabytes by editing etsy sysconfig puppet server or by using the set command which you can copy down the, in the description. Next, we need to start and enable the puppet servers using systemctl command and check the status of the servers to make sure it has started. The installation of Puppet Server has added a few entries to the environment variables, but we need to open a new shell to see this. If we enter env and pipe it with grab puppet, there are no entries visible. But if you enter exec bash to open a new terminal or exit out of root user and log in as root again, we can see the new entries. You can also check whether Puppet has installed correctly by entering Puppet Server V. One last thing we need to do on this VM is adding all the IP addresses of the VMs to the Etsy hosts file to act as a DNS and resolve the IP addresses to host names. When doing this, make sure to name the Puppet Server Puppet. This will make the installation easier because the agents try to reach the server called Puppet by default. If you name the Puppet server anything else, then you'll need to apply extra changes later. By the way, if you, I'm using uh, Vim as code editor. If you're new to Vim, then watch my videos on the subject. Save the file and exit. Then try pinging the client using their name or alias, which we just entered. This finishes the installation of Puppet Server, and we can continue with the clients. SSH into Client 1 running Rocky Linux. Log in as root, then enable the Puppet repository, and after that install Puppet-Agent using DNF Package Manager. Next, start and enable the Puppet service. Exit out of root and log in as root again for the environment variables to take effect. Just like editing the hosts file on the Puppet server, we need to do the same on all the other VMs. You can simply copy paste it from the host file on the Puppet server. Test if you can ping Puppet Server 
and other clients from this client using their host names. Then we need to create a new SSL certificate on the client and authorize it on the Puppet server. A certificate is to authenticate a node to prove who they say they are. On the client, run Puppet SSL Bootstrap to create a new SSL certificate and send it to the Puppet server for validation. Alternatively, you can run Puppet Agent dash dash test, which will run the agent to pull any changes from the Puppet server. Now log in on the Puppet server as root and list any pending certificate requests by entering Puppet server CA list. Sign the certificate with the following command. Copy paste the certificate name from the list above. Now if we run puppet agent dash dash test on the client again, we can see that the connection is established. Now do the same on the Ubuntu client with the slight change that you'll need to use apt as package manager. For more information on apt as package manager, watch my video where I covered this. When using apt, you'll need to update your repositories and might as well upgrade all the packages. With Ubuntu, you'll also need a different link to the package. Download it using wget and install it with dpkg. Run apt update again and then apt install puppet dash agent. Start and enable the service. And don't forget to add the IP addresses with host names to the host file and ping to test. Ping command is the most basic but also most helpful command for troubleshooting connectivity issues. And I covered it in previous video if you're interested. Reopen the shell as root and create a new SSL certificate. Go back to the Puppet server, list any pending certificates and sign it. Then go back to the Ubuntu client and run Puppet Agent Test to confirm the connection is, uh, is set. Next comes the Windows client. Navigate to the following page to get the latest link for Windows Puppet Agent. It's best to sort by last modified to get the most recent version on top. Then right click on the latest Puppet Agent and copy the URL to your clipboard. Then RDP into your Windows Server client, open PowerShell and using the invoke web request command download the agent to your Windows VM. Use the option dash out file to enter the destination path. After that Install the agent simply by executing the download MS, downloaded MSI file. This will also start and enable the Puppet service. We'll also need to add the IP addresses and host names to the host file in Windows, which is located under Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. From the start menu, we can see that the Puppet agent is installed and we can start the command line from Puppet. Then run Puppet agent dash T to create a certificate and send it to the Puppet server for approval. Then go back to the Puppet server, then list and sign the certificate. When you go back to the Windows server, Make sure to open PowerShell as admin and run Puppet Agent T again. To recap, install your VMs in Google Cloud with minimum requirements. Firewall and subnet are good as default. Just add a VM internal IP addresses with their host names to the Etsy host file on all VMs. Install the Puppet server on a Linux OS 
and run the commands as root. Then install the Puppet agent on the client and create the SSL certificate for the Puppet server to sign. Hope you enjoyed this video about how to set up a Puppet server with three clients on Google Cloud. And I'll see you in the next video.